Hello everyone, so today we're going to start a chapter named as the drug acting on autonomic nervous system. So uh, before starting the drugs, um, we're going to study just general things like what is uh, nervous system. So the nervous system comprises the brain and spinal cord. Now the nervous system has the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The, the and Then the peripheral nervous system is going to contain the autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. And then the autonomic nervous system is going to divide it into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system now by looking at this diagram the sympathetic nervous system is composed of uh, actually the sympathetic nervous system is uh, thoracolumbar outflow which is going to be composed from t1 to l3 while if we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system it is it composed of two parts the cranial uh, part and the sacral part so the cranial part is 3 7 9 10 while the sacral part is s2 to h4 okay now in um, um, so uh, the uh, sympathetic nervous system the uh, the preganglionic fibers are small while the postganglionic fiber are large while in sympathetic ner uh, while in parasympathetic nervous system the pre are large while the post are small just look at it i already told you in sympathetic nervous system the pre is small while the post is large while in parasympathetic nervous system the pre is small pre is large while the post is small okay we are going to do the difference between the autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system just by looking at it so autonomic nervous system as the name indicate it's self and uh, nomos means governing so it's self happening things we do not control it while the somatic nervous system is the uh, uh, system which we control it it's a voluntary system in autonomic system we are going to have two neurons the post and the preganglionic fibers while in somatic nervous system we are gonna have only single motor neuron as shown in the diagram as well and um, autonomic system is gonna supply these smooth muscles heart central nervous system and all those stuff while the somatic nervous system is only gonna supply the skeletal muscle and uh, we are going to do the actions in later on videos which is going to um be really easy as well okay um as we know that there's different organs and uh, glands in our body and uh, uh, there's they which are going to supply by the sympathetic system as well as the parasympathetic system but there are certain organs or glands which are going to be either supplied by the wholly solely sympathetic nervous system or wholly solely parasympathetic nervous system okay first of all we are going to do the parasympathetic one for example the ciliary gland the pancreatic gland and the gastric gland is only going to be supplied by the parasympathetic nervous system okay while the sympathetic supply this the organs such as sweat gland hair follicle uh sweat gland hair follicle spleen and most of the blood vessels are going to be only supplied by the sympathetic nervous system okay now we're gonna do this diagram okay okay just look at the diagram this is general uh, difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system we're gonna do it later on as well but in this picture uh, it's like just an introduction okay just look at it we we'll first do the eye then heart we will do the chronological order for example uh, first come eyes when we look at someone and uh, first come eye then we look if you go down so there's gonna be heart and then lungs and then GIT and all those stuff so in heart uh, in eye it's going to the sympathetic will cause dilatation while the parasympathetic will cause constriction so the sympathetic will cause dilatations it's called midriasis in eye and uh, the parasympathetic will cause constriction of the pupil which is called the meiosis then in heart the sympathetic will increase the activity for example if if we see a dog or, or if we see some um, lion so we run or in exercise condition we run uh, so our all the we heart our heart heart activity increases so 
our heart rate increases chronotropic our force of contraction is also increased the inotropic effect and uh, uh, as well as the po positive uh, chronotropic and dronotropic effect also happen over here okay if we talk about the lungs so in uh, the para in the sympathetic uh, condition it causes the bronchodilatations okay while the parasympathetic stimulation causes bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm so that's why in asthmatic patient we do not give uh, parasympathetic stimulatory drugs because it's going to make the, our uh, lungs or bronchus more constricted so it's going to make the asthmatic condition more worse okay and if we talk about in GIT, it is going to reduce the um, peristalsis of the GIT as well as causes the constriction of the splinter. On the other hand, the parasympathetic do the opposite thing. Like it's going, to, it is going to increase the mortality, increase the peristalsis as well as the relax the splinters. Okay. To do the cholinergic system so in cholinergic system we are going to do three things the synthesis storage and release so first of all we are going to do the synthesis so mitochondria contain the acetyl coa the choline will come from outside into the neuron terminal which is going uh, there it is going to be combined with the acetyl coa acetyl coa and choline will combine together and form acetyl choline okay now in the presence of enzyme acetylcholine transferase the acetylcholine will be stored the second step i already told you it's storage so it is going to be stored in the vesicle okay now in vesicle we are going to have um, the v snare vesicle snare and in the terminal uh, of the in the terminal of the neuron we are going to have the T snare so for the release the V snare goes is going to be combined with the T snare and which will cause the release of the acetylcholine okay then after the releasing of acetylcholine it's going to be combining with its receptor okay or uh, then after some time when the acetylcholine level is really high so there's going to be destruction of the acetylcholine but in the presence of enzyme acetylcholine trace and which is going to form acetic acid or we can also call it acetate and choline okay now uh, if we talk, I want to stop these steps so we need three kind of drugs uh, I already made the mnemonic as well which is the hepatitis sorry it's not working okay just remember it hepatitis virus B okay hepatitis virus B let me find the pen okay, got it hepatitis virus B okay so just this is hemicolonium this is vesamicol and this is botulinum toxin so uh, for example if you want to stop the synthesis so we will give the person hemicolonium if you want to stop the storage then we will give the person vesamicol and if you want to stop the release of the acetylcholine so we give the person botulinum toxin okay now we gonna have uh, cholinesterase so cholinesterase i already told you it is gonna break down of acetylcholine and form acetate or we can also call it acetic acid plus choline it's gonna also form the choline two things acetylcholine is gonna break and it will form choline and acetate or acetic acid now we're gonna have two type of acetylcholine the true choline sorry we're gonna have two type of cholinesterase the true cholinesterase and the pseudo cholinesterase okay it's two true cholinesterase is gonna break the acetylcholine as well as the metacholine okay metacholine it's gonna hydrolyze the acetylcholine as well as the metacholine okay and it is going to be present in the ganglia rbc and neuron neuromuscular junction for remembering these three things well they, they it can also it come it can come in mcqs that where the true cholinesterase is present so to remember that we uh, will remember a mnemonic called gnr g and r so g with a g is glial cells and is neuromuscular junction and r is the rbcs okay now and i already told you that true cholinesterase is going to hydrolyze acetylcholine as well as the methacholine okay if we talk about the pseudo cholinesterase which is also called the butyryl cholinesterase it is going to cause destruction of the acetyl hydrolysis of only acetylcholine not methacholine okay 
and it is going to be present in plasma cells as well as the glial cells okay now we are going to do the cholinergic receptors we're gonna have uh, two type of receptors the muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors now the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors are going to be divided into uh, different types muscarinic is m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 okay so uh, before doing their uh, uh, position where they are present we will do their action the action so for remembering that i uh, written m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 so i wrote q q and q so for remembering that i remembered ice cream between two queens so this is ice cream and this is two queens so there is ice cream between two queens ice cream between two queens so this is um, uh, m1 m3 and m5 has an action which is going to form dag and ip3 okay and m2 and m4 will in has an in inhibitory effect okay now and if we talk about the NN and M NM, which are the um, uh, nicotinic receptors, they are going to have ionic action, anionic action, anionic, okay, which is um, opening of the sodium and potassium channel mainly, which is written over here as well, okay. Um, so uh, now we are going to do the position of each uh, muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors. First, we are going to do the muscarinic receptors. So muscarinic receptors uh, M1. Uh, for remembering uh, the position of M1, we are going to remember the mnemonic GAC. G A C. G A C. Okay. So G is gastric gland, A is autonomic ganglia, and C is CNS. M2 is going to be present in heart. Uh, M3 is going to be present for remembering that we're going to remember mnemonic S E E C. C, um, C is uh, looking, so I going to come in it. Um, apart from that, there's going to be smooth muscle, endothelial uh, cells, and exocrine gland. M4 and M5 is going to be present in the CNS. Okay. Now, if we talk about the N, 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 M, and N, M. So, N, N is going to be present in the autonomic ganglia and adrenal medulla, while N, M is going to be present in neuromuscular junction. Now, if we, uh, if you want to know extra stuff, so the nicotinic receptor is going to have five subunit. Okay, um, uh, two, two alpha, one beta, one gamma, and one delta. But it's not written in Tara, but it's written in different uh, books like Lippincott. So if you want to remember that, so you can remember that as well. Okay.